Good morning, children. Yes. Welcome to the Universal Audio Booth. Welcome to the last day of the last day of the last day. And this is the last day of, of the, the last day. day yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow is another day. That'd be a good title for a movie. Yeah. I'm thinking. All right, so we're here with Vance Powell. Yo. Uh, who uh, has a good taste of making records. Um, I'm very lucky. Some of them are pretty good. Some of them. Some of them are pretty good. And um, so what kind of records do you make? Uh, usually kind of loud, noisy, um, <laughs> crappy sounding, you know, indie rock oh. like things. Sometimes I do, you know, these guys. So um, that's not that so much, but uh, yeah. No, no, that you sounds know. pretty good. I thought that crappy sounding and indie rock were synonym. They're, they're, yeah, that's they're, what it they is, work right? together. Okay, yeah. I got it. Okay, so um, today um, we have the privilege of having one of Vance's sessions, and it's a special case. So what yeah, was this that is set a, up? This is an interesting little piece. Um, so uh, Universal Audio and Mojave Audio uh, asked me to do a session for uh, with them uh, in uh, the East Bay over in uh, Berkeley, I believe, at uh, Expression and uh, at Expression Studios. And we, I was given a task of produce, okay, set up, record, and produce a, a song by Marty O'Reilly and the, and the Old Soul Orchestra in one hour and 30 minutes, using entirely, the only processing in the entire thing was Apollo's. That was it, Apollo Unison uh, technology and Mojave microphones. And it, was, uh, it came out really good. Uh, and, oh, on top of it, do it in front of a live audience. And on top of that, do it with no headphones. And did so you have to have your hands tied behind your back, too? No, oh, I, I, okay. I was able to use both hands. So that was hands, easy, basically. So yeah. you'll be able to see me actually using one of my hands in this session. That's amazing. So, but it came out really good. And, and, uh, and the guys at Mojave, they really took good care of me. They picked really good microphones. And the microphone sounded great, but it's you know it's interesting when you you go into a session in a room you've never been in, and with a band you've never worked with with microphones mostly you've never heard, and you have an hour and a half to try to make magic. Now there's a backside to this, and that was the whole idea was that we were going to take this session, we were going to then set up in the tracking room where we recorded it, and I was going to mix it in front of the same live orchestra, lo orchestra, <laughs> sorry, same live audience. And uh, what ended up happening is a, a, a one of those great things that happens sometimes with uh, live music or recording, and that was in between moving the session and the and the Apollos from the control room to the tracking room when we hooked it all back up and powered it up, the uh, drive holding the session, the boot block on the drive was corrupted, and we lost the whole thing. Fun entertainment. So what ended up happening was the guys at UA spent some time and actually extracted it and I took it back to my studio and I mixed it uh, just in the computer like I would have but not with 40 people or so watching me so um, all right and that's what we have here so you kind of can so the can first thing we're going to do is we're going to listen to an excerpt extract of the song yes okay let's do that Waiting on a word to say Something sacred we could utter someday Looking for a hand when I'm blinded by a glow Come and go, heartbeat benevolent. No matter how I act, at least I know. I can't wait on the sun. I pass a few times. I could undo a few miles before I pay. 
paralyzed Oh, I paralyzed Pull me down from the heaven song at the end of this all right so let's um let's look at the setup video of this because you can explain cool. to us a little bit what the setup was while it's running behind us sure so everybody in the same room everybody in the same room but what about the bleed that's you can't make a record like that yeah you oh. know uh, strangely enough if everybody knows what they're playing and and plays it well enough you can actually record it all live in the same room there's oh. dusty right there from mojave that's the science fiction yeah i know it's crazy um yeah. there is a little bit a little gobo in front of the bass and that was really only to try to keep the bass in a bit not to keep anything out of it just to keep it in so um let's look at the microphone choices a little bit Mm -hmm. um, so, oh, I have that one. I love that yep, one. Yep, Royer, stereo yeah, overhead. SF Fantastic. Bananas. And then, so you put unison mic pre's uh -huh. uh, in, the, um, in the Apollo. So can yes. you explain what the principle of that is? Well, basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to, uh, A, impart uh, the sound of the plug-in, which is a model of an actual unit, into certain pieces of this, you know, of, of this recording. Uh, I'm, a bit, I'm a big fan of 1073s on kick and snare. And drums, and so 1073, 1073, 1073, a little bit of EQ here and there. This is something I record with all the time at my place. I understand them. I mean, as in I have the real 1073s. I know what they do. The unison sounded exactly like it, you know, and it was great. So a small diaphragm condenser on the snare, yeah. uh, a large diaphragm condenser. Uh, on, the, on the neck of the bass. On the neck of the bass. And then a, a Royer, uh, I believe it was a 121 or a 122 in the F-hole. There it is right there yep. at the F-hole. And then I'm, I took a DI out of his bass and did the DI for, a, for that. We'll, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. And then there was a violin. We yep. used a 122 or a 121, I'm not sure, for the violin overhead. Mm -hmm. And then I took a DI. He had a big effects pedal, lots of effects and things. And his own PA, which was kind of crazy, this Bose PA that sit behind him. Well, and um, yeah, it was kind of cool. And I just took a line out of that and used that as a DI. And then the 121 ended up kind of getting some of the, the, the PA and the, the violin, uh, you know, over, over the top. And then uh, guitar was uh, two uh, Mojave mics, a um, uh, pencil, little pencil condenser, and, uh, and, and a then, 121, I believe. Okay. And then that's a 300. That's 300 for the vocal. Yeah. Yeah, no headphones, you notice, no headphones, no gobos, you know, all in one room. Nice. With 40 people. All right, so let's, uh, let's switch. People back in the booths, all back there, and then all along the front, and then in the control room. There's but about 40, something like that, people. It's like making a record in a subway station. There's just people looking Somewhat. at Somewhat. Yeah. All right, so hold on one second. Uh, it's funny, you have the whole session. I do. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get that. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. So let's... So um, a couple things you saw in the video, the little chair dancing thing. You saw me doing this. And what I was doing, we only had, we only got time for three takes. So I was trying to make sure that we kept tempo-wise within relative tempo for each, each song. So if I needed to grab a piece. So I had, I had the band actually do a couple things on each one different. So there's a little breakdown part, and the drummer played a little heartbeat. Now the song is called Come and Go Heartbeat. So there's that boom, boom. Boom, boom. There was a little break, and I, I said, okay, let, you know, don't do that this time. Let me hear it. He just did a stop, and then I was like, no, that wasn't good. So I, I stole that from the last, the take before. And then at the very end, I asked them to play an um, unnormal, <laughs> that's the wrong word, uh, a, a, a not normal number of bars at the end. So instead of being, let's say, uh, 16 or 32 bar out, let's just say 16, it was 17. So it's you know dun 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 
So it was an, this weird extra bar, and that kind of threw him for a loop. So we did about four takes of just the end until we got the right exact one, because I just wanted it to hold out a little bit. I wanted it to end sort of too short, you know, instead of like making an ending. Like, do something, you know, try to be a little smart with it. So. That's always hard for me. Yeah, yeah. me too. Um, so why don't we look at, um, uh, by the way, the, uh, uh, I have a synonym for uh, abnormal. Yeah. Uh, you could say French. French. Yeah, so abnormal It French, is a little French. Kind of the same thing. Um, uh, that's what I'm told. Um, so uh, check this out. Let's listen to. Let's look at the session. Cool. And uh, f and I think it would be interesting for you to describe your process on drums um, to these lovely people right here. Okay. So let's see what this does. It's uh, wonderfully quiet. That's because he's not playing yet. Yeah. Yeah. He won't go. Be quiet. Uh, yeah. Second. Yeah. Go there. Yeah, yeah. Let's go here. So I don't know if you noticed the drummer's playing with shakers. So he's playing with a shaker and a mallet in one hand and then something else in the other. So he's playing a shaker part and then he goes to the, when he goes into the, where we're gonna play here, he's literally playing the snare drum with the shaker. And then he plays the rest of it with a mallet, so. Yeah, he's like doing these little flams with the stick and the shaker. And what you're hearing, the, the harmony you're hearing is the bleed from the rest of the band yeah. in the drum mics. Yeah, you could drop those room mics out and okay. kind of get an idea. So, so the thing is about recording in the room without, with, with, with bleed is that uh, one of the things, uh, this is not me, this was Glenn Johns, I, I just read in his book one day, he was talking about it, is I just line all the amplifiers up on the kick drum. So put a gobo between them, right? Just gobo between the instruments and then line all the, all the amplifiers up uh, along with the kick drum. So in other words, the whole unified front of the recording, which sounds really weird, is on the beat. I know that sounds weird, but the thing is, when you do that, the, the, the amount of guitar, and I close mic guitars, but you can, you can put a mic a little bit back if you want. The level of the guitar is so loud based to the drum that's five feet away from it, you just don't really get a lot of bleed. So it's quite stunning. On actually. this, the guitar is right next to these drums. The bass is right next to that. So we can just play the drums and you can just kind of hear what's bleeding, hopefully, over the saxophone. Can you guys hear the guitar? Not really, right? No. Cool. And, and the thing is, uh, <clears throat> of course, this requires the science fiction part where everybody can play their part. If oh, yeah, there's that. Yeah, that's the one. Because if you intend to auto-tune everything uh, or melodyne everything, you are, uh, and I'm going to use a very technical term, screwed. Yeah, it gets a little wonky. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that's when you have to kind of stop and regroup. Yeah, yeah that's the part where you re-record. Right, yeah. So, right. so check out, uh, go to the bass in this part. And, uh, and, and just check out the, the, the whole, all three bass mics. So same spot, check out the bleed. All right, yeah, there's a little bit of snare drum in it, but great, so what, who cares, right? Yeah. And if you go to the guitar, and this will be the last one of these we do. Uh, e guitar, yeah. Yeah, that guy. Now that guitar is maybe three feet from the snare drum. I mean, it's just, it's just not that far away, but it doesn't matter, it still works. Because altogether it sounds like this. Yeah, you know, so. Sounds like a record. Then, cool, now solo up the vocal real quick and we'll just do the, the last one of the bunch here. Uh, one second. It's going through a bunch of stuff. Yeah, you have to mute those. Throw me down from heaven. Clear me in out of things for. Now notice it's coming and going, right? That's because I went into the session and just raised and lowered, chopped those pieces down. I don't cut them out. I just turn them down. Clip gain. Just clip gain them down. So whenever the, he's playing, the ambience of the, on the vocal is still going on, which means the vocal effects, all that, it's all still integrated into one thing. 
And it's like an, um, a manual expander, basically. Yeah, kind of. Just doing a button. Just so, kind of. So, you can do it with your finger, but I'll so just do it. So on the vocal, you, all you have on the vocal is this guy. Yep. And then he's going to a clean bus. Yep. I, yep. Uh -huh. I, I would, which I would call it a cleanish bus. That's cleanish. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cleanish sure. bus. And then into a, a, a not and then a, a, a clean a, at all a, bus. A not clean at all bus. This is the uh, fatso with every button on. <laughs> and as many lights as I can possibly get on at once. Well, let's look at that. So this is the, the sound of the vocal. This is the sound of the vocal with the cleanish bus only. Yep. Hold find me down for the heaven. Clear me in out of the floor. Okay, cool. Okay. This is and the no sound EQ, of the, actually. And no EQ. And this is the sound of, which is a testament to the quality of the microphone. Yep. Here's a... Um, Here's the sound of the vocal with your not so subtle That's compression. So, yeah. It's a Christmas tree. Yep. All as many lights as possible. And then these are the two together. Put them together. So the Fatso's doing this thing, this thing that I, I kind of call, I like it to call it the back end. And basically what happens is when the vocal hits, the compressors compress, everybody's compressing, and then the, the fatso, there's so much gain and compression that when the, uh, when the vocal starts to fall off, in other words, like when the artist starts, because everybody starts hard and then kind of, you can kind of see them falling off, the fatso starts to open, and it starts to open up and basically raise the gain up so your fader moves aren't you know four or five db it's half db quarter db it's small amounts to ride the vocal basically and it makes it a lot it's totally thicker. cheating if you um if you go to the verses for example it's interesting to hear that because you hear when he's not screaming yeah like here waiting yeah. on a word to say yeah so this is not i didn't cut any of this out You can hear the shaker, it's kind of cool. Something sacred we could utter someday. So without without the crush, it sounds like this. Something sacred we could utter someday. Hear how the vocal sort of falls off? It feels a little tentative yeah. if you add this. Something sacred we could utter someday. Same exact if same exact automation, same exact everything. Cool. So this this thing has worked for me for so long. That I mean, this is what I do live. I mean, on my console, I do the, exactly the same thing. I just always bring it back into two channels. One's the Fatso, one's the 1176. Exact same thing. So let's talk about your drum setup here because uh, it's very particular to what you do. So okay, cool. How do you work? All right, well, I, so basically this is real simple. It's a simple kick drum, one channel of kick drum, but there's two microphones. Uh, one channel of snare drum, but yet there's two microphones. I always combine these. I, I never like having multiple things. You know, the more drum channels and weird things you have, the more farther away from the producer's vision you're going to get. You know, like if you just think about the fact I get 18 drum tracks or I get six, which one's going to sound more like the, what everybody wants? Hopefully the six. So uh, this is not a lot. This is kick snare and an overhead, and that is it except for one thing. And that's this weird little microphone. Hey, do me a favor, turn that EMT off. So there's a little microphone. It's not made by, Ho by Mojave. It's made by Ampex. It was made in the 60s. It's, it's an Ampex 1101. I just drove the price up, trust me. Uh, I've seen this happen. It's an Ampex 1101. They were, the first one I bought was $9. Now they're about 50 to 100 bucks. But goofy looking little thing. I don't even know how to describe it. You'll see it when you, when you look it up on eBay. But there's a lot of them out there. They went with 601, 401s, 402, Ampex, Fine Lines, all these home tape recorders, reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders. And they were, they're an Omni-ish. I think <laughs> they're a cardioid, but I don't know. Uh, they I, come I with a quarter they... inch. They come with a quarter inch. Yep. And uh, I plug them into a distortion pedal, a Pigtronics Polysat. And then that goes out to a box that a friend of mine had made for me called a Beard Verb. Mm -hmm. And it's just an analog bucket brigade delay and a distortion. I rarely use the distortion because I use the Polysat. But it's really awesome. And what I'm trying to do with this sound here is I'm trying to sort of get a triplet feel or a heartbeat. Da-da-da-da. 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 
da, 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 that kind of vibe. So we're gonna try to, I'm gonna try to show you this and it, it's really hard to hear anything in here, but we'll, we'll see if I can sort it out. I might have to go, yeah, I can't go there. We have to go on that. I'm a professional, people don't try this at it's home. All right, it's all right, yeah. This is just this one microphone. All right, so I, I took a little, uh, chopped a little piece out of it. And then you added a... And then EMT. I added an EMT to just... The only reverb on the track is this one EMT reverb uh, that's on that... So it's like... And it's just, it's, just, it's just bouncing a bit, right? Just bouncing along through the track. In the, in the context of the whole set, it sounds like this. Yeah. Just little... You know, again, the song's called Come and Go Heartbeat, so it's that. It's, and so how do, you, um, how do you route this stuff? All right, cool. So uh, I do a little bit of parallel bussing here. This is exactly how uh, I do parallel bussing on my console, my SSL. I send everything with a skin to two buses, the uh, 33609 bus. Which is, which right, is here. Uh, right there, and I have a I have a three three six zero nine, a real one, and then the Fatso bus, which is here, which is right next to it. So everything with the skin is that, okay. and uh, and basically the Fatso bus is a crush, it's a crusher, and let me kind of uh, play that same part and let me mess with this real quick okay. because I actually played this a little too friendly. It's okay. Um, it's right there. See, for those of you guys who are looking at it and wondering how it's routed, it's just sending the exact same mix via a, a, an output, like a bus, straight into those two buses. It's not doing different mixes. It's just right, sending it Right, it's the it same in. thing. Yeah. So, and it's also going to the main output, right? Yeah. So it's going to the main output, and it's going to the crush bus, and it's going to... Then the, the crush bus goes to the main output. Yeah. So here's what it sounds like with the fat so brought in. And you can see, again, same setting. All the lights are on as much compression as I can possibly do. I'm just gonna turn this up a little bit so you can hear it. Yeah, so just everything comes a little closer, gets closer to you. The thing about parallel busing is you can do tons of compression like this, and all I really want is I just want the whole mix to come closer to me, closer, pull everything in. So there's four, there's, there's five buses basically, or six, I don't know. Here, there's a, there's a drums bus, which is 1176. There's the drums crush bus, which is the Fatso. This there's the band bus, which is 1176. Never does more than 4 dB of compression. And then there's a vocal bus. And the vocal bus, I'm using the uh, 1176. Although in my studio, I use a uh, GML 8900. And then They're you just, have two... Um... And then I have two buses that are parallel buses for a transient designer. So I use the transient desire to either add more point to the kick drum, right? And then make it shorter, and then add that in a little bit, or make it longer with less point. This is just that thing. And then I do the same thing with the snare. I pretty consistently always have the snare in this dumb mode of the, as long as humanly possible, stretching it way out, and then having it a short attack or a soft attack. So whereas the snare may be going bang, this is going bang. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like really long and, and stretched way out. And then I just blend that back in until the snare sort of fits in the mix close, but isn't driving the meters really hard. I think it would be entertaining to, um, to listen to the drums. And I'm going to mute all the parallels. See yeah, that okay, the yeah. mute button's here? Sure. So I'm going to do uh, one bar with the parallels and one bar without, okay? Here we go. Mm -hmm. And there's without. Obviously it's a jumping level, but listen to the, the energy, the attack. Yeah, the fat's so maybe too loud, but yeah. There you go, yeah, cool. See the difference? So if, we're wondering, if you were wondering while you're mixing and you're doing everything 
right and everything sounds good, but you don't get the energy, the depth, and the, the, the density of, say, Vince's mixes or whomever's mixes you listen to. Yeah. This is because you're not doing this stuff. That yeah, and, and, and you just got to try this. Yes. You know, try it. Um, I, I, every now and then, I'll, I'll be in the middle of the mix. I'll have this going. It'll be great. And then suddenly the drums aren't clear enough for me, right? They're just like, oh, well, you know, so I'll just duplicate one of these parallel buses, like the drum bus, which, by the way, the drum bus, the 33609, has all the drums, including the cymbals. The Fatso only has skin. Skins. That's it. No, no overheads. And I'll just take that drums bus, duplicate it, take the 33609 on, and put uh, like a 1073 or put any EQ. The Helios is really cool. The Helios. And then just put like a little bit of 10K in it. And then turn it down, put a little 10K or maybe too much, like four or five or six dB, like a lot. And then just turn it up until suddenly the drums get clearer. You know, just, just use the parallels the way you can. And, you know, if, you, if you're using Pro Tools, you know, you use the option or the control key, whatever that is, yeah. the control key, and you route to multiple places at once. Yes. So, like, I've been routing to a mix bus, and then I'm routing to a drum bus, and I'm routing to another drum bus, and I'm routing to... So, it's, it's, if I don't mix in the box very often. My console, I have 32, 32 buses on my console. I use all 32 buses and, the, and three mix buses. So... You know, it gets pretty complicated pretty fast. So um, we are running out of time because there's a demo in two minutes. And um, i got to fly. Those are two good reasons to end this. All right. So I propose Thanks we Thanks, you guys, for coming. I propose we end this by watching the whole song. So you see, you get the vibe because it gets really amazing at the end. Is that fair? Do you have the time? Cool, sure. I okay, do. Okay, rock on. Thanks, y'all. This thing made my nose tickle through the whole thing. Waiting on a word to say Something sacred we could have someday Looking for a hand when I'm blinded by a glow
back here wait on the sun pass a few times I could undo a few miles before I paralyze This is Vince Powell's work. Thanks, you guys. All made with an Apollo system and unison technology. Yep. Thanks, boss. Thanks, buddy. Safe flight home. <laughs>